Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. This series that we're doing here is based on this passage. Paul writes, but now faith, hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. And in the first lesson, we talked about biblical faith, and I said that faith, biblical faith, was made up of uh, three basic elements. The first of which, precise knowledge. The words of Christ in the Bible. The word of God in the Bible. This constitutes our faith. When the Bible talks about the faith, it's talking about a certain body of knowledge, of information from God's word. Secondly, an act of the will in responding to this knowledge, in belief, in obedience. I decide that what I have heard is true and I respond to that truth in some way, in the way that that truth has demanded or required for me to respond to it. That also is part of faith. Faith isn't just one thing, it's made up of several elements, precise knowledge, an act of the will, and then of course the experience of joy and determination and confidence or Hope, which is the thing we're going to talk about tonight. Faith is not only in your head, not only a decision that you make, not only an act of the will that you make, but it's also something that you feel. Faith has feeling, and that feeling uh, is one of joy, as I mentioned last week, determination, confidence, all of this is part of faith. Now, in the second lesson, as I mentioned, I'd like to look at one of the experiences produced by faith, and that is biblical, biblical hope. Now back in the 60s, remember her, Dusty Springfield? Some of you folks might remember her, a little pop, little pop reference here from way back in the day. And she, her big song uh, was a song entitled um, uh, Wishing and Hoping, Wishing and Hoping and Dreaming. During the British invasion in those days, all the British bands and singers were invading America and she was one of them. And that song was about a girl who was waiting and wanting a guy to really care for her, to pay attention because he was pretty much ignoring her. And so she was wishing and hoping you know, that, he would, that he would respond to her in some way. And I use this example because I think this is how the world interprets the idea of hope. It's just another word for wishing and hoping, wishing and dreaming about something. For example, well, I, I hope I win the lottery. Or I hope, it's, uh, I hope it'll be nice for the picnic next week. Or I hope you'll have a great vacation. Hope is seen as a, a fond gesture of goodwill or the expression of an unfulfilled desire. This word hope in the dictionary has a much narrower meaning. According to Webster's dictionary, the word hope means a confident expectation that a desire will be fulfilled. So even in the world, the world doesn't have the right idea of what the world thinks of the word hope. All right? But when the, when the Bible uses the word hope, it uses it in actually in this sense right here, a confident expectation that a desire will be fulfilled. A little history of this word, how it evolved through time. In the earliest times uh, the, in the Bible, in the Hebrew language, the word for hope in the Old Testament was one that meant a cord, a rope, or an attachment signifying being attached in safety. By the time of Job, the word included the sense of longing and expectation. And then David and Solomon expressed this idea when they include all of the concepts of security, desire, and waiting. For example, David writes in Psalm 16, he says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices, my flesh also shall rest in hope, security, longing, desire. 
Solomon writes in Proverbs 14, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. Again, security, longing, desire for something in the future. Then we move to the New Testament. In the New Testament, the writers use this word hope in only one way, and that is to express the idea that one anticipates, usually with pleasure, what one waits for. In the world, the general use of the word hope is akin to wishing or dreaming for something. But the true meaning, which is in harmony with the Bible, is a confident expectation that you will receive something or something will take place. Now there's one important difference with the hope that is in Webster's dictionary and the hope that is in the Bible. The hope in Webster's dictionary is based on the idea that one is relatively sure that things are going to work out. In other words, you've worked hard in your math class, for example, you've done the assignments, you've aced all the previous tests, so you hope that the final will go well. So you have a confident expectation that you should do well in the final based on all the work that you've done. So based on what you know, things should go well. Your hope in this case is well founded. Of course, you could have an accident on the way to the test. Or you could have a bad night before the exam. Or the teacher may decide to test on obscure material not really covered in class. You never know those teachers what they, what they can do to their students. In other words, the hope referred to in Webster is relative. You're relatively sure. That's why they call it hope. You're pretty sure, but you're not 100% sure because stuff happens. Now the difference between this hope and the hope mentioned in the Bible is that when the Bible mentions hope, it is talking about something that is 100% sure. That's the main difference. The Bible uses the term hope when it refers to something that is not yet present or visible, but, is, but nevertheless is 100% sure. Webster's uses the term hope when it refers to something not yet present or visible, but pretty sure. Do you, see, do you see the difference here? Hope in the world, pretty sure. Hope in the Bible, 100% sure. What would you rather have, pretty sure or 100% sure? Well, I'd rather have the 100% sure. And that's what the Bible is talking about. The Bible uses this term when it is referring to something that is, let's use another word, that it is certain, certain that it's going to happen. So why this difference? The difference between the two concepts of hope is based on the issue of guarantee. In the world, only human strength or intelligence or honor can guarantee what is hoped for. Since there is a limit to these things, there is only a limited guarantee on our hope. Limited guarantee for something promised in the future, why? Because you never know. You never know what could happen, right? In the Bible, God is the one that guarantees what we hope for. And since there is no limitation on God, there is no limit on His guarantee for what we hope for. That's why our hope is absolutely sure, because the guarantor is God. Now the psalmist describes this truth so simply in Psalm 71, I believe, verse five. He says, for you are my hope. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Think about that for a second. He doesn't say, oh God, all this stuff that you promised me, oh Lord, I'm, I'm just, just thinking about the, the good things you've promised. I, he's not saying that. He's saying for you. You, God, you're my hope. Oh Lord, you are my confidence from my youth. God is the foundation, the guarantor 
and the provider of all we hope for. So the chances of us receiving what we hope for are 100% sure. <laughs> Here's the, there's, always, there's always a little good and bad news mixed here. A hundred percent sure, you see that goes for the good stuff, but it also goes for the not so good stuff too. You know in Mark 16 where he says, those who believe and are baptized will be saved. That's a hundred percent sure. Uh, but then he finishes that and says, but those who disbelieve will be condemned. Well you see the downside is that also is a hundred percent Sure. So the writer uh, in Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us about the things that we hope for. He says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So the writer tells us that faith produces a feeling of confidence that we will receive the things we hope for, the things that we confidently expect to receive from God, not from man, but from God. There's also another difference between Webster's hope and the Bible's hope. Hope in this world is for things that we don't have, but are in the future somewhere, maybe. You know, good health, I hope you have good health in the future. Well, maybe. I hope that you will have prosperity. You know, young people get married and this and that, and people stand up and make a toast, and, you know, we hope that this young couple you know, has a large family and has prosperity. Maybe, maybe, because uh, we can get any one of you up here to make a testimony to say, well, you know what, I was young once and, uh, and they, they hoped that for me in my marriage, but you know what, it didn't quite work out that way. Two years into it, my husband you know, had a car accident and, uh, uh, he, he, you know, he was handicapped for the rest of his life and he suffered you know, for 10 years and then he died and we had no children. That, that wasn't the thing that was hoped for on the glorious wedding day. That's why they said, well maybe, I hope. I hope you have success in the future. You know, you've worked hard and you went to school and you got your degree and you got your training. You ought to have some success, let's hope for that. And then, and then the, the, the oil that's at $125 a barrel goes down to $10 a barrel. And, and you, you were trained as a petroleum engineer. Yeah, prosperity, maybe. Hope in the Bible, however, refers to things that we have, but that we don't see all of yet. The other reason why biblical hope is 100% is because God has already given to us the things that we hope for. We just do not see it all just yet. This is what the Hebrew writer means here in Hebrews 11 verse one. By faith we accept as true that God has already given us the things that we hoped for, but we haven't seen them yet. Now the best example that I can give for this concept here in Hebrews 11.1 1 is Christmas. It's Christmas. You know, we have the presents, our names are on the presents. You know when you're a little kid, you go and then you see which presents have your name on it. They're there, they're yours, they got the name on it. The boxes are all wrapped up, one problem. We have to wait till Christmas, you know, midnight or whenever, so we can get down there and rip open the boxes and see what's inside. It's ours. It's been given to us. My name is on that thing. I just don't know what's inside yet. Paul also talks about this in Romans chapter 8, verse 24. He says, for in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we eagerly wait for it. Then in Ephesians 1 verse 3, to complement this, Paul says again, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. It doesn't say who will bless us, with all the blessings in heaven. He, he says here, who has, he's we have them all. 
We own them, they're ours, they belong to us. But like those Christmas presents under the tree, we haven't unwrapped all of them yet. We haven't been able to see all of them yet. Note that every, and he also says, every spiritual blessing has already been given to us. Everything that we can ever hope for. Like what, for example? Well, forgiveness and the peace that comes with forgiveness and freedom from condemnation and punishment and eternal life and spiritual power and a new character all of these things and more have already been given to us. We haven't fully unwrapped them yet. That's why we hope. Now some of these things we already perceive in ourselves and some we don't. For example, I see the power of the Spirit of God working in me to enable me to overcome sinfulness that I was at one time almost powerless to overcome. In other words, I see myself becoming a spiritual man, a Christian man. I can look back five years and 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and say, boy, I am not the man that I was 30 years ago in Christ. God has helped me to grow. I see that. I see it. It's not the work of the devil, that's for sure. And it's not the work of my flesh because my flesh is not interested in spiritual things. My flesh just wants to eat candy and ice cream. That's all my flesh wants to do. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> Marty only amens the food references. <laughs> Those things I see, but there's some things I have, but I don't see, and that is, that glorious body that I will resurrect to. I, I have that, it's been given to me, it's mine, but that, that one's still, it's, it's to be unwrapped at a future date. But God has promised that I have, what did He say? Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now some of these things, as I said, we already perceive and some we don't. But the point that the Bible makes is that we already have them. That's why our hope is secure. Now how do we obtain hope? Kind of looked at the you know, what, who, how. So how do we obtain hope? Webster's Dictionary doesn't explain it, but the way to have hope in this world is through effort. Let me explain. You work hard, you prepare, you invest, you hope for the best. That's okay. That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll use the student analogy again. The student who goofs off, never does the homework, pays little attention in class, cannot have real hope to pass the final. He can wish, he can dream, but he can't have hope because hope is confident expectation, usually based on effort or some other kind of guarantee. Well, he's done everything wrong he cannot expect a right outcome. The Bible explains that hope, biblical hope, is obtained not through effort, but through faith. Faith in Jesus Christ, exactly what Marty was talking about this morning in his lesson. And here's how that works. We believe that Jesus is actually the Lord and Savior. We believe that that's true. You know, how, how do we get to hope? Well, I start by believing in the Lord of hope, who is Jesus Christ. And then I respond to Him in obedience expressed in repentance and baptism. And this will obtain for me all of the spiritual blessings promised by God. Now, the apostles, you know, they don't mention every single blessing that you get when you believe or when you repent and are baptized every time they mention baptism because the Bible would be you know, that thick. You kind of pick it up here and there. So in Acts 2, you know, 38, you, you find out that uh, you'll be, uh, you receive forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. And I think I've done a lesson on this before uh, where in different places in the Bible you find out other things that you receive when you become a Christian. Uh, when you repent and are baptized, you know, you're added to the church. Oh, there's another blessing. You put on Christ, there's another blessing. 
You appeal to God for a, for a clear conscience, you know, first Peter. There's another blessing. All of these blessings, all of these blessings we receive through faith and we can have confident expectation to receive these things. Why? Because God has promised them to us. You know, none of us have worked or prepared or have any influence that can obtain these gifts or blessings. We've all, you know, like the student, who has goofed off and has no chance to pass the test through skill or effort, that's us. No chance to get to heaven through skill or effort. But God has abolished the test and He guarantees the rewards to all those who believe in Christ, something that everybody is able to do no matter where they're at in their lives, no matter who they are in life. And so we have hope because through Jesus Christ, we possess all of the heavenly blessings. We may not see all of them yet, but like those presents under the Christmas tree, our names are on every single one of them and God is saving them for us until the appropriate time. And what will be the appropriate time? The Bible tells us that when He comes and when we are resurrected, to a glorious body and a glorious life. And we, uh, you know, in, if I can say in this way, we get to open all of the gifts that God has prepared for us. And so I ask a question, and this is one, you know, this is a great you know, conversation starter. <laughs> if you've run out of things to talk about with somebody, a friend, a family member, you've run out of, you know, how's the weather, how's school, how's your family, How's your hobby? You, you know, you're you're kind of looking for something to carry on the conversation and you know that they're not Christians. How about asking him, do you have 100% hope of going to heaven? You want to surprise them? You want to wake them up? This will either kill the conversation <laughs> or it'll bring the conversation in a whole new direction. Do you have 100% hope of heaven? And usually if I'm talking to someone who is not a Christian or a nominal Christian, many times the answer will be, well, I think so. Or they say, I hope so. But when they say, I hope so, they're really saying, I'm hoping and wishing and dreaming. You know, I'm dreaming to go to heaven. Now that's one thing for someone who does not know the Lord, someone who does not know the gospel, I can forgive them for saying, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm going to heaven, I'm not sure. It's when I talk to another Christian and I ask them the question, so how sure are you that you're going to heaven? And they go, well, I don't know, I hope so, I guess so. Mm -mm. As Christians, we are 100% certain that we are going to heaven. One 100% certain. Not, I think so, I hope so. 100% absolutely sure kind of hope. This is the kind of hope that the Bible talks about. This is the kind of hope that we have or should have. Now you have this hope if you've obeyed Jesus Christ and are faithful to Him. And I tell you, rejoice in this hope. Launch out on it. Be courageous in it. You already have everything you've hoped for. You've got it all. You possess it. Don't be afraid to step out in faith. But if you don't have this kind of hope, ask yourself, why? Why don't I? I think you know, I'm preaching to the choir here, right? If I was talking to strangers, people who are not people of faith, Obviously, I could go in and explain the gospel, but here, you know, we're among believers here. And so I'll kind of just twist this a little bit and say, if we're members of the church and we're you know, the body of Christ, if we call ourselves Christians and we've been Christians a year, five years, 50 years, 80 years, whatever, and we answer the question, I don't know, I think so, then the next question we should ask ourselves is why? Why do I have some kind of uncertainty? Why is it that I, I doubt to a certain extent? Why am I not 100% sure that I'm going to heaven? Why don't I have that thing? That's, a, that's, a, that's an important question to ask yourselves, to pray about. Lord, why do I not feel confident 
about what you've promised me, what I am hoping for, what's in the way. That kind of prayer, you know, that kind of prayer, God will answer that. God will reveal that to you if you ask Him. Anyways, if you don't have that kind of hope, and if you know why, and if it's something you need to take care of, then why not attach yourself with that cord of safety, you know, like the Old Testament writers used to say, why not attach yourself securely to the Lord Jesus Christ today? Always we make the invitation in the hope that someone who has not yet obeyed the gospel will hear the invitation and respond to it by confessing Christ and being baptized, or perhaps by answering the question, I don't have that hope because I've doubted, and I doubt because I've sinned, or because I've fallen, or because uh, whatever, because there's something between me and God, or there's something between myself and so-and-so, my wife, my husband, my son, whatever, my friend, there's something between us, and that thing right there, that, that discord is, 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 is not permitting me to have 100% hope in my own salvation. If that's the problem, and you need prayer for that, or you need to confess that, whatever that is, we're always ready to minister to you here as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement at this time.